how hard was it was it to really leave all the street shit alone and really focus on the music? It's very hard, man, you know what I'm saying? By me, that's all I knew, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, coming up, you know, my mother was on drugs, my dad was elsewhere, you know, my grandmother raised me, so you know, and you know, we didn't have nothing. The only thing my grandmother made sure is, you know, we was clean and we went to school and that was the war, but when she died in 93, it left me and my sister in the streets, you know what I'm saying? So I used to be, I had to do whatever they, they eat, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't like to brag about it, man, but I was robbing, I was carjacking, I was doing whatever they eat, and you know, I, I, I came from that, I started selling drugs, and some kind of way, you know, I came to be big in the drug game, you know? And you know, see, like when the police were closing in on me, it seemed like I just said something, I, let me invest my mind into this music, and I took a gamble, man, you know, and here it is. That's why I made that song with my album, man. It feels good to be here. I, I mean, I mean, when, when it comes to to the drug game, like you could keep getting bigger and bigger. You could keep, you know, you can keep growing, you know, an organization like that because it's something that someone, you know, always wants. But I mean, like, what's really the advice that you give to the kids that, that that's still out there, still out there dealing? You know, like. How, how do you really step away from it, and, and how, how do you really let go of it? Because you know, what I mean, like, like you have a in, in that world, you kind of have this 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 mentality that that you know you you making the money real quick, you blowing the money real quick. Yeah. You know, you don't see a lot of kids who really put a lot of money aside. Yeah. And don't think long term. And then you know, the jail terms comes with it, and you know, the violence comes with it, and everything else like that. You know, like how how do you you know being being at the level that you're at right now and going through all that. What, what's really the advice that you would give to these kids well, right know, now? One thing about it, I've never like a hustler or not, no man or woman for what they do, man. But the advice I give you that, you know, everybody ain't cheats, man. You got a lot of idiots. So, you know, people like to shine. But my advice is, man, if you're going to do it, man, you know, the dope game don't last forever, man. So, you know, because that's, you know, that's crime. So, you know, if you can't get caught for it, you can't get put away. So, you know, Try to invest your money into something, you know, you want to do. It, it ain't got to be music. It could be whatever, man. But, you know, you, you, you got to think about it. You got family, you know, people out there who love you, man. You got you to think for the long run. You just can't think for the flashy things you're seeing right now, what you can do, because money come, money go. Fast as you can get it, fast as you can get it on, man. You weren't really, you know, real serious about the music in the beginning. It was something you were just kind of, like, really playing around with. Like, I think, like, you did your first mixtape. You had like two songs. Nah, my first mixtape, it was all, it was what? all the songs I had, period, that, have, that I have done. But you wouldn't believe, like, I wasn't trying to be a rapper at first. I was that's trying, what I'm saying. I was trying to be the CEO, you know. Exactly. I went and got rappers who I knew from different projects, and and I formed my group D4, you know. Okay. Stunt man, Hugh from Hollywood Court. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Brasky and Front Street, they from Born Home. You know, we got uh, Fabo, he from Bankhead, Perry Home, Mook B, uh, Harris Home. And I just, you know, I just formed a team, man. and. People fell in love with it, you know, and you know, like I formed a group like the end of uh, 2002, beginning of 2003. By 2005, that's let me see, 2004. Then when we had got the song "Bitch Can't Do It Like Me," but I ended up going to prison. Mm -hmm. And they had helped me do the song, Bitch Can't Do It Like Me, but when I was in prison, they were like, look, but everybody be singing your, your, your part, like when it comes to your, at the end of the song, I was like, for real? So it was, it was kind of exciting me then, about three months before I came home, I had called Stutt, and Stutt said, but we got another song called Laffy Taffy. And I was like, man, Laffy Taffy, I was like, let me hear it. So I'm listening for the jail, so I'm listening. So I'm saying to myself, man, you tripping. I said, man, this ain't it. <laughs> he said, well, I'm telling this song here, boy. They said, this song hard, a bitch can't do it like me. I said, well, you gotta be crazy. I'm thinking, bitch can't do it like me, the one. So I come on with it, like I had a little surprise apartment. It's a party for me in this club out Vegas night. And when that song came on, Left Taffy, I ain't never seen the energy so crazy from the people. And he, either I go back to the streets, or you gotta go here with this music. And, you know, I went forward with the music, man, you know. And then a couple of months later, as I was, out doing my thing, Front Street came with me in the studio one. They said, "Lo, get what people saying in the street." I'm like, "What?" He said, "Deep." They said, "Deep for other shit with that fable," and that's when I kind of took it offense. But I really didn't say them. Then when I used to go to the studio late at night, and I used to be kind of drunk, high, or whatever, and I used to be trying to write. And that's when I came up with the song, "I'm the Man." You know what I'm saying? And that's how I was feeling. And and when I did that song, we, we took it to the pool palace. That probably that was the first song I ever did by myself. So I took it to the pool palace and gave the T rock. And, you know, I did a couple more songs, did the Mr. T D with DJ Scream, and the streets were going bananas. Yeah. But were you, you know, when you did the songs, were you surprised at the reaction? Oh, yeah, I was, be honest, I was surprised. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, you know. But I did, I'm a man, people were coming up to me like, um, 
Shout out that song, that's the type of music right there. We wanna hear from you right there. You know what I'm saying? We wanna hear that snap shit from you, you know what I'm saying? No offense to it or nothing, but we know we know you live for real. We know you for banking for real. We wanna hear that type of music right there from you. I thought I did about luck, but you know, I just kept recording and doing more songs and it was like, here I am, you know. When I did, when I found, when I really know what I had, because people were saying like it was whistle, but low got a certain sound. You know, what I'm saying everybody was saying that in the streets a little bit. Then I came up to, I think, oh, let's get it. My, about my fifth song, I did it. When I did, let's get it. And I was hearing stunting them, bumping the calls and you know everybody bumping it. I was like, boy, I think I got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that gave my confidence. And from there, you know, the next year I was doing shows. The people was telling me, I don't know how that, or oh, you on top that first mixtape. I don't know how you gonna top that one. I was like, damn, I, I was kind of like nervous, and then hit, here I come again with they know, done, done, and the rest of it. And history made But what do you think about the whole situation? Man, my point of view, man, I really feel like they tried to paint a, a bad picture on my brother and tried to make him look like, like he was a hater, uh, it was some envy, jealousy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And actuality, you know what I'm saying? Bro been having this shit, man. He been in the condo. I got my hat on and I had my Coke bottles up under my hat. And I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on, knowing she gonna tell me to take it off. And I'm just sitting there just gawping down, you know, in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coke everywhere. 